Cords and injections are great to treat pain and inflammation, but did you know that certain mistakes can make them less effective or even cause complications? In this video, I'll go over the common mistakes people make and how you can avoid them to ensure you receive the best results. For those who don't know me, my name is Dr. Sonam and I'm a practicing interventional sport medicine doctor. Now for anyone who's had a cortisone shot before, leave a link down in the comments and let me know how it went. Number one, not resting enough after your injection. So cortisone injections are really effective to put out a fire, but if you do too much in the immediate one to two days, you can actually flare up your pain. So what should you do instead? Make sure that you are planned for at least 24 to 48 hours of rest after your injection. I find that this is the optimal amount of time to let that fire be put out, and then I ask people to increase their activity slowly thereafter. Number two, applying heat to the area too soon. So right after an injection, I do ask that patients avoid applying a heat pack to the area because it can increase pain and inflammation. I recommend to wait at least two days before thinking about using heat to that area. And along the same lines, saunas, hot tubs, bathtubs are all very similar. After about 48 hours, you are clear to do so. If pain is an issue after the injection, I recommend people use oral pain medications to help bridge them until the cortisone starts working. Number three, expecting instant pain relief. So when we perform a cortisone injection, I am careful to warn my patients that it takes approximately two to five days for cortisone to kick in. So if you come in and your pain is not better right away, that is normal and it, I'm gonna reassure you. In most cases, I tell patients, try to plan these injections so that you can rest for a few days and then the effects of cortisone will come in at about the five day mark. Now, if there's a lot of pain in the interim, I do recommend that you can take anti-inflammatories as long as it's safe and cleared by you and your doctor. If you're still having pain 10 to 14 days later, then at that point in time, I would recommend that you follow up with your physician as most cortisone injections should work by that timeline. Number four, doing high impact activities too soon. So very similarly to number one, I ask people to make sure that they rest for a few days after their injection to avoid flaring up the area. However, the same is said for the level of activity I want people to get back to. Once a few days have passed, I do recommend people start with low intensity activity first to avoid flaring up the area. Going from zero to 100, for example, can put you at risk for further injury and further irritation. However, if you start moving slowly, you will build up tissue, build up load tolerance, and greatly reduce your risk of flare-up and re-injury. Number five, ignoring side effects. Now with mini injections, they will come with some side effects, and I did review a number of cortisone-related injection side effects in a separate video that I will link down below. But the important things are to monitor for these side effects and be aware of them mainly a post-injection pain flare, which can happen to about 10% of people where pain can get worse for the first 48 hours, and then it does improve. And also for signs and symptoms of an infection. So these present usually seven to 10 days later, and you're looking at fever, increased pain, redness, and swelling to the area. If these happen, I do recommend that people definitely follow up with their physician for a proper assessment. Other side effects that people can see is an increase in blood pressure and blood sugar. Usually these are transient, which means that they will come down in a few days. However, if these numbers remain elevated, I highly encourage you to be seen in follow-up by the physician who did that injection. All in all, mild side effects are normal, such as flushing, an increase in blood pressure, and an increase in blood sugar. However, if there's anything more severe or something that is not resolving, then do follow up with your physician. Number six, skipping a rehabilitation and strengthening program. Many people think that once they have their cortisone shot, they are all better, they are cured, and they can do whatever they like. But it's very important to understand that the cortisone is mainly taking away the inflammation and pain, but it's not curing the root cause of the problem. In these cases, you really have to work diligently on a strengthening and rehabilitation program to strengthen the muscles around the area. For example, in the case of a knee, strong glutes and strong quadriceps will stabilize the knee joint, thereby decreasing the amount of pain you may feel from osteoarthritis of the knee or degenerative changes. Number seven, getting too many injections too often. For patients who believe that it is safe to get an injection every one to two months, unfortunately, it is not. And usually I recommend that patients receive no more than three injections a year. The reason why is after this, you can increase the actual negative effects of cortisone on the cartilage in the body, as well as also the negative effects due to the absorption of cortisone in the bloodstream. So to play it safe, we recommend that no one gets more than three injections of cortisone in a specific site per year. If the pain does keep coming back, then we will discuss alternative treatments, including PRP, hyaluronic acid, and potential oral pain medications. I hope this video helped you understand what to do and what not to do after receiving a cortisone injection. If you found this information helpful, 
leave a like, and also let us know in the comments, have you ever made any of these mistakes yourself? If you're interested in learning more about my personalized protocols before and after injections, I'm gonna leave some links down below. For now, that's all.